everybody is definitely getting their smokes and drinks ready for this. Oh one. yeah, um, this top this topic will do that. Yeah. Um, and actually, you you definitely already have a few supporters. George calling um, you out in the audience. We've he actually said this had... is very unprofessional, Mike. And I haven't even t- I haven't even really told anybody I was going to be here. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we've got some folks on Twitch, and we have some folks on uh, we have some folks right now on Facebook. Um, okay. So, Mark, we have you up right now, um, mm-hmm. and you're live, and everyone can see you. Um, there. This is Mark the Flat Earther. Well, so Shout Mark, out to my guy. Mark is actually a flat Earth recruiter. Recruiter and, and Mark welcome, recruiter, yes. Welcome. Well, I mean, but I am also a flat Earther, but yes. Um, so you're gonna get at least one person out of this. <laughs> yeah, actually, we could we could already tell in the comments, Mark, that like there's folks that are they're already starting to self convince even. Somebody in the comments right. said lots of flat Earths. Lots of flat earth fans all around the globe. Yeah, yeah. Heard that one back in twenty fifteen. It's a good one. So so Mark, can you tell us a little bit about your background and maybe how you um maybe first got interested in this and um just sure. just give us a little history around it. I got into this back in the summer of twenty fourteen out of conspiracy boredom, really, more than anything. Uh, Meaning I had an opinion on just, I still do, on just about every conspiracy you could think of. And this was just sitting there in front of me going, you know, the whole flat earth concept is like, "Eh, I don't want to look at this. This is stupid. This is really dumb. But I was getting older. And so I thought, "Eh, you know what? It's on my bucket list of things to do is to, to learn as much as I can. So I looked at it and said, I can stomp this thing out in a weekend. And then nine months later, I was in real trouble. I, I, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't prove the globe anymore. Could not prove it in a court of law. So I made a series of videos at the beginning of 2015, February 10th, actually, at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, and made, made the, my first video and just put it out there with my name and my address and uh, everything, all my personal information. I said, look, get a hold of me if you think I'm wrong. And thought that somebody would would shoot it down almost immediately, and they didn't. Uh, and over the period of the next six eight months, I had so many people contacting me, uh, not not just media and uh, the general public, but subject matter experts. That's the part that really threw me was just about every member of the armed forces: uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, air traffic controllers, engineers, pilots. They all started contacting me and said, "Yeah, you know what? It's not that crazy. Here's why." And it just kept snowballing from there. And then every year, something weird happened to, to spike it, to make it even weirder. So like the beginning of um, uh, 2016, we had rapper B.O.B. make that song against uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson called Flatline, which was really, really interesting. And then in 2017, Kyrie Irving comes out. And 2018, you know, the documentary came out. It just kept getting weirder and weirder to where now. I mean, last year I did conferences in seven countries on this, and there all, there were so many regional meetups that I couldn't even begin to attend them all. Uh, but it was it was just wild. I mean, I did I did a freaking um, a television commercial in, in Australia out of this, just it is, you know for a mobile phone app called the 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 campaign was called um, uh, Foolproof, and it's like, well, if you can, you know, if Mark can understand flat Earth, you can understand our app. It's like okay, uh, it sounds fine to me as long as I can see flat Earth on camera. That's amazing. So. And so, so now that sort of you know, now that we've got the coronavirus and the pandemic and stuff, yeah. Um, how has that affected how you know? Obviously, you were going to conventions and meetups and doing traveling and stuff. So, how has that affected all of that for you? Oh well, obviously the convention. You know, nobody's doing any conventions anymore uh, right now. And regional, we have done some regional meetups, which is neat. I haven't gone to any because they haven't been that close. But some people have done regional meetups because a lot of if you're into in, in, you're into flat Earth, you're probably into a lot of conspiracies. And most of the conspiracy world, from what I can tell, kind of feels the same way I did. And I do, which is I think the virus is overhyped. I mean, yeah, fine, it may be real, but the numbers are abysmally low for, you know, not that we should get into it, but for being month four, we're in the middle of April, no. 
no, this is there's something else. In fact, I've been talking about it for the last month, which is it just seems like there's another shoe is going to drop here, which is some I call it the event. Something something big is following this thing. It's not about the virus. It's never been about the virus. It's about you being home. Hmm. But hey, oh, I'm sorry. Back back to the um, other than me not going to the conferences. Uh, I've had a real uptick in emails and personal correspondence because since a lot of more people are home, a lot more people are getting into conspiracies because why not? It's like, how much can you watch Netflix before you you know, get into YouTube? And that's where most of the conspiracy world lives right now. Right. So, so Mark, for some folks out there, because some of the initial questions that we um, were getting, maybe you, and I'm going to try to bring up some pictures here, but maybe you can explain sort of sure. the basic concepts uh, around the flat earth ideolo yeah. ideology if yeah, that's yeah. the right way to put it sure did you did you want to bring up pictures or do you want me to just describe the well, flat earth ideology you can start describing it and i'll bring up some pictures for oh you. yeah 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 so what we're talking about here is that the earth is not some little ball covered with water and smoke that's flying through space at an impossible velocity and basically an impossible universe you're living in something very very small uh it's a well small and big at the same time big to us uh it, you're living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling and uh there's what we what's outside of it we don't know but this thing is so large that even our best and brightest and by that i mean the united states and the soviet union didn't even figure it out until about 1960. and when they did they decided to just keep a lid on it a little play on words there and not tell anybody for as long as humanly possible. And that's all they did was, you know, they created a, a fake space program, multiple fake space programs, and sealed off the upper edge and the outer edge. So the upper edge was, the space was militarized, and the outer edge is sealed off by the Antarctic Treaty. And for those of you who don't know, the Antarctic Treaty, which was ratified in 1959, uh, says that no company from any country anywhere can set up shop there forever. For, for any reason whatsoever. And it's it's mind boggling because, you know, we can, especially in the States, you know, we live on greed and power and money and we can frack in your backyard, depending on where you live. We can start that like next week. And yet they're not even allowed to talk about Antarctica, even though supposedly it's made out of money. Uh, you know, a mountain range made out of coal and uranium and minerals and oil, not even allowed to talk about it. it was just fascinating. That was, that was my tipping point. Most people's tipping point is long distance photography which we'll get into, but uh, for me, it was the Antarctic Treaty. Right, and so, you know, and we do have, I'm going to bring try to bring up a picture here of um, where you're sort of talking about the edge, and I, w I was trying to find a good sure. picture that actually has the, um, like, the ice wall around it. Uh, I think this is a well, you can one. just type in, I mean, have any of your listeners just type in Antarctic coastline. And click on images that'll show you what we're talking about here and by that i don't mean it's a common misconception that antarctica the, the coastline of antarctica isn't the edge of the world and by the way it, let me let me dispel the other stuff we're we're not talking about um a flat asteroid that's flying in space that's one of the most common images that's put out there we're saying that it's just some snow globe that could be sitting on somebody's desk um the movie thor did us no favors whatsoever because, you know, the cosmic waterfall, you know, it's like, why is all the water, you know, why doesn't all the water fall off? And it's like, well, why doesn't water fall off in a lake? You're, you're in a building with a saltwater lake inside it. There's, there's no difference. But the answer to coastline, for example, is the beginning of the edge of the world. I mean, you would have to, our best, best guys. So we started looking for this back in 1928, the United States Navy with a guy named Admiral Richard Byrd. And he basically spent, youngest admiral in the history of the Navy, he basically spent the remainder of his career from 1928 until his death in 1957 just flying around Antarctica. That's all, with the exception of World War II. And uh, at, during that time, nothing happened. They just kept looking and looking and looking. And then during Operation Deep Freeze, again, not classified information, from 55 to 56, that's when in my opinion, he found it. He found the outer border. So when you get to the Antarctic coastline, fascinating continent, by the way. So yeah, you have to go, you know, it's an ice wall for a, for most of it, but there's some peninsulas that are, that are beaches, rocky beaches. But then when you get up on top of it, it ramps up to about 14,000 feet. It's a, most of the continent, even by mainstream uh, standards, are four, is a 14,000 foot plateau. 
there's no indigenous animal life, no plant life, uh, no ancient civilizations as far as we know, and it continues for thousands of miles. So the outer edge, the outer marker would be thousands of miles in from, uh, from the beach. Um, and I think I, you know, in watching an interview with you, uh, with somebody else last night, um, yeah. they were sort of saying like, well, you know, why hasn't anyone figured this out? Not just maybe the people that you're saying are like in on the, the, the conspiracy of this, right. Right? Right, right? But for other folks out there, and I think there's examples, I think, um, there was a fellow, uh, I think a couple of years ago that was trying to build a rocket, right? So that, cause he wanted to, sh to go up himself and actually mm. take pictures and show that. Th yeah. Th yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Mad, that there mad, was no mad, mad right? Mike Hughes. I know this one very, I know this intimately. Uh, mad Mike Hughes approached us. And again, I, I, sorry if you didn't catch the news, you know, he died uh, uh, earlier this year. Oh no. I'm so, oh, I didn't realize. That's that. right. <laughs> That's right. It's not, not a big deal. Um, he's a he was a daredevil first before he was a flat earther. I mean, he was a stunt man that uh, jumped limos. I mean, that's what daredevils do. That's the reason why people go to see him. It's like, oh, he could die, which is why he was supposed to be in the documentary behind the curb. Uh, but then the producers said, uh, "What happens if he crashes? <laughs> right? You know, can we can we use that footage?" Well, and they decided they decided they couldn't. And so then he finally got a deal with the um, the Science Channel of all things, a program called Homemade Astronauts. And the short version is he came to us back in 2017 and said, hey, can can you donate to my cause and help me finish my rocket? And, you know, we said, fine, you know, how much is it going to take? And he said, oh, $8,000. We gave him $8,000 and uh, we said, you got to put a flat earth sticker on the side of it, which is why the media just went crazy with it. And he launched a couple times and it was fine. It was never intended. Ne Come on, he was only going up a couple thousand feet. He was never intended to prove anything. It was just there for awareness. Mike, seriously, Mike's priorities are in this order. Uh, in fact, you can mix the top three. Fame, money, girls, uh, stuntman work, and then maybe Flat Earth. He had to learn Flat Earth on the fly. When he came to us initially, he had, didn't know anything about Flat Earth. He just thought, it's like, oh, okay, maybe we could help promote each other. He had no idea it was going to do as well as it did. Um, so anyway, he was just shooting just recently before the, the whole virus thing happened, uh, a, uh, an episode for homemade astronauts for the science channel and his parachute didn't, didn't, it deployed early. It fell off. <laughs> the, the parachute system fell off the rocket as it was going up. It was like, okay, well, that's the end of that. And, uh, you know, he, he, he was, he was part of our group, but not really part of our group. He was there for more awareness. Other people have done it. And it's like, yeah, he, he was more of a fringe member than anything else. So, you know, Mark, interestingly, and I'm not sure, um, the fellow who introduced us, uh, which I'm, you know, old, old friends with, he, yeah. know, he knows my background. So one thing that I had done years ago um, working for a consulting company was to work on a on the uh, Red Bull Stratos project. Oh, that thing. Yeah. <laughs> and so what I, my role in it, and just to sort of be like very transparent is mm -hmm. um, I did the engineering or sort of like the, I did the planning and the implementation of doing the metadata insertion within the live stream, within the live video yep. stream. And what that means is the biometric and environmental data that was being collected both on Felix's suit and on the shuttle itself yep. for both his, you know, stuff like his heart rate and blood pressure, but also wind speed, air pressure, all of that good stuff yep. um, that was being measured on him in real time that we wanted to insert it to be frame accurate into the video stream. So sure. this way, when you were, if you or anyone else were watching live when it was happening and you scrubbed back, the interface back then had all of that biometric and environmental data. And what we didn't want was for there to be not the right sync. And then all of a sudden people would be like, ha ha, look, I just scrubbed back. And it says that, you know, his heart rate is this, but it was actually you know, much lower. He's in the middle of falling, and look now you're saying his heart rate is high. Right, right, right. Um, we go, go, go no, please go ahead. Oh, well, no, I was going to say that we had no problem with any of that. The in fact, the Red Bull jump, the only thing that because Red Bull jump is brought up to me a lot. 
uh, was the um, the outer visual with that massive fisheye lens uh, to where even Neil deGrasse Tyson, which I loved, Neil finally helped us in this case, where Neil go, came, did a presentation um, shortly after the jump, and he was saying that visually it was somewhat scientifically dishonest because the, the lens showed a curvature on the earth, which was so exaggerated for 130,000 feet. Again, not knocking the Red Bull thing and your part in it or anything. He's like, hey, great. No small feat to get up somebody to 130,000 feet to jump out of a balloon. Great. But what they, but they pushed, like anything, it's hyped. And it's like, oh yeah, this is the edge of space. And Neil went on and said, no, that is not the edge of space. And he went as far as to say, he goes, no one would ever be able to see any curvature from 130,000 feet, which is so would I use that anytime anyone says, oh yeah, I saw the curvature from an airplane, I throw him Neil deGrasse Tyson's clip. I say, okay, fine. That's the most popular scientist in the world currently. You want to say you're, you're, you differ from him? Go ahead. He's on your team. Um, well, and so just, you know, uh, cause there's folks that we're getting, we're still getting a lot of very interesting, um, comments out there. Um, so are all the other planets flat too? include not just the earth? No, 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 no. They might very well could be spherical, but you can't land on them. They're just lights in the sky. And it's a good question. I mean, so uh, planets what, are what lights? You so, well, so, they're just, they're just lights. Uh, no different than the moon. Um, like for example, if you go into a planetarium and I know this dates me because nobody goes to planetariums anymore. Uh, but if you went to a planetarium, you, you could see the moon on the ceiling. It's perfect. It's like, wow, there's the moon on the ceiling. Yeah. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, it's just a light in the sky. Light so on the they sky. say the moon affects water, affects like... Uh, the... They say a lot of things. Uh, does, the moon... So it doesn't affect high and low tide, the moon? No, it's just there. I mean, it's, it's, it's not coincidental. It's just the moon and the sun and the stars and the plants are just in, basically in a lab. So then what is an and... eclipse? The what? What does the eclipse do to the moon then? The eclipse is just the the moon I mean, self I mean, dimming. Uh, Sorry, we can do I we sun. can do no, that's right. We can do all this stuff in a planetarium, all of it. And so again, when you walk out of, out of a planetarium building, who's to say you're not just in a much bigger building? Who's, so who's have you say? ever seen the Truman Show, Eric? So the sun isn't flat. The sun is flat. The what? The the sun is just a big light. Is what you're saying? Yeah, sun's just a big incandescent light bulb, and the moon is just an LED night light, for lack of a better term, and it's self-illuminated on top of it, meaning nice. it's not reflecting the, the sun's rays at all. Nice. So then when the moon becomes like a half moon, you saying like half the moon light shut off? Yeah. Got you, got you. That's, yeah, that's, it, that's all I'm saying. I mean, it is it is no different. We have the tech, well, hell, we've had the technology to do most of this since the 70s. The only thing we couldn't do was the sun because it was too bright. We didn't have the, the capacity to generate that sort of lumens, couldn't generate that sort of brightness, but we can now. In fact, there's a, there was a company so called- So the sun uh, wasn't that bright as what you said back in the day? No, 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 no. We didn't have the ability to generate that bright. No, ah, sorry. <laughs> You're at, I forgot. What I'm saying here is, by the way, that we had nothing to do with the building of this place. Whatever's happening up, up there, the stars and the sun and the moon and all that stuff, has nothing to do with our civilization at all. It, was, it predates us. It was built by someone that was way older and way more powerful than us. Well, I know you could either go an advanced civilization, some sort of ancient aliens thing, or God. I tend to lean towards the God side, the divine side. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. So planets are lights. Then why do yep. we why do we give them a name and stuff? Why why like well, so, yes? Why I guess, not? Yeah, I why guess not? Eric wants Think to know why why like sort of what like wh why did this come about? Like what if if at some point scientists discover that the Earth was flat? Right. Why like why the big ruse? Why why wh keep it going? Yeah, exactly. I don't know if that was his question. But but I'll but I'll go down that one that part first, which is okay. Why why lie? Because we didn't even figure it out for sure. We didn't know for sure. Because remember, our tech is not that old. Remember, we haven't even we've been having what HD televisions for twenty years, not even twenty years. So if you found out, I'll ask you as a journalist, uh, if you found out in nineteen sixty, all of a sudden your scientists figured this out in nineteen sixty, would you tell the public? And, you know, if you didn't know for sure, and to remember, because we didn't even really have pressurized planes until later. By the time you got to Antarctica, it's like, oh, crap. 
you know, the world is a building. We are in some sort of Truman Show. Would you tell the general public? It seems like an easy answer. It's like, yeah, the people have a right to know. Like, yeah, it's, but you realize your, your civilization has already been established, very much established, and there could be some shock waves. So how do you explain the core, the core, the what is it called? Core Loris effect in the planes when they fly. Coriolis and they, effect. Yeah, there you go. How do you explain that then? The, the Coriolis effect? Yeah. Which, by the way, for folks at home, isn't I Wait believe that's when you go up high. You're, the idea is that's that when the plane, enough, when a plane is trying, plane, right? No, it's when the plane is so they change the they change the direction based on the rotation of the Earth. So, like, if you're flying from New York to Hawaii, there's a certain direction you got to go because of the the way. Oh the yeah, Earth yeah, is yeah. Spinning. I'm sorry. The the spinning, the spinning. Um. So, the the Coriolis effect. Okay. The Coriolis effect, I don't usually get that question because normally it has to do with um, artillery, but the Coriolis effect will affect planes yeah. as well. So the Coriolis effect, does does the Earth spin at a thousand, if if you believe in the globe, then the, the globe spins at a thousand miles an hour at the equator, but it spins at zero at the North Pole and the South Pole. That's that's actually a great question for us because most snipers, in fact, every every military guy I've talked to, forget about planes for a second. Think about everything we shoot, bullets, missiles, tanks, howitzers, all that stuff. Nobody ever builds the Coriolis, short version for anyone listening, is the Coriolis effect is just the spin of the earth. Do we build in the spin of the earth into any of our firing solutions? No, there isn't a military guy out there that will, that will tell you that. And the reason why we know this is because the Coriolis effect depends on your region. So if it spins at a thousand miles an hour at the equator and zero miles an hour at the North or South pole, then somewhere in America would be what 700 miles an hour, maybe 800, depending on where you are. Well, if you're shooting a cannon 30 miles, 40 miles, or whatever it is, you have to not only at that point know windage and elevation, but you have to know where you are geographically and you have to build in a whole other chart. Every military guy, every single one has told me the same thing, which is we don't account for it. Now, with planes, it's a little easier, which is remember, a plane is just a slow move, a slow bullet. You know, it flies at, what, 600 miles an hour, give or take. But it flies much, much longer distances. And for us, when it comes to planes, usually we deal with the curvature of the Earth issue, which is why doesn't it nose down or nose up as it's flying? Because remember, if it's flying over a curvature of the Earth, eventually, and you could, some people say, well, no, gravity is keeping it perfectly, perfectly locked in. It's like, no, nah, that's not how it works. Either it's going to have to nose down or nose up. And you're right. When it comes to the Coriolis effect, if it's landing on a runway and that runway is supposedly moving at hundreds of miles an hour in a given direction, why doesn't it account for that? It doesn't. It's a good question, though. So explain the center of the Earth now. Explain the, center explain of the, Earth? the core. Explain. I just the... watched, by the way. No, it's good. I just watched rewatched the core, the movie from yeah, oh, exactly. 15 years ago. Just rewatched that, which is I, I don't laugh when I watch it. I mean, it's a good speculation movie. Because people will say, um, how deep is, is the flat earth? How deep, you know, how thick is it? It's like, uh, I don't know, how thick is it in the globe? And they say, well, it's 4,000 miles to the center of the earth. I go, really? I go, how, how, what's the deepest hole ever drilled? 2,000? 1,000? 100? 10? It's eight miles. Deepest hole ever drilled. Russians and the, and the uh, Germans tried for years. They Once they got down to that eight mile marker, they just kept tr trying and trying and they just kept melting things off. I said, nope, can't go any deeper than eight miles. And yet the cross section of the earth, we, you know, we all seen it, you know, red and orange and yellow and white. Now, these bands, how do, how do you know that? You, you don't. In fact, if you look in the small print or look on wiki, it'll say, it's like, we have no idea what's down there. We're just basing it off of what comes so what up. So about the bottom of the ocean, the Mariana Trench then? That's only 30 something thousand feet down. That's nothing. I mean, it's, it's it's just a few miles. Even now, if they were smart, yes, you're absolutely right. They should try to get. They'll never be able to do it because we just don't have the tech to do it. But try to get a drill into the Marianas Trench. Maybe you might might be able to go further. And I've taken it a step further. I don't really tell a lot of people this. If you really wanted to drill really really deep and see what go past eight miles, you just use nukes. You just like nuke in big chunks just and and try to work your way down. So, Maybe the military. So then, it. what exactly know. is that the the center of the earth then what what is keeping the earth, earth alive there is no, what is, there, there is there's no center there's no center of the earth because there there is no globe there's if if 
people again i challenge any scientist like tell me what the center of the earth is and they'll say oh you we use seismic radar or all this other stuff because really because you've had these cross sections of the earth for a long 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 time way before you had seismic radar and i've never seen a seismic radar chart showing exactly what it should look like and i'll throw one more thing out there Drew. E even if you could convince me that you know what the core of the earth looks like which you can't how in the hell are you telling me what the core of Mars and Jupiter and Saturn? There's cross sections of every planet in our galaxy. It's like, how? How How do you? It's just absolute guesswork. Science is just guessing and they don't like saying that. It's like our, they never science loves saying this is what it is until it isn't. And then they revise. Do you believe it. like, in oh, aliens? Now what it is. What? Do you believe in aliens? I used to. But not in the way, in fact, I still believe in ancient, oh, other civilizations, but not, not. So do I believe there are things flying in the sky? Yeah, you can take night vision binoculars. I own several pair and it's fascinating. You can watch with night vision binoculars. The sky is just crawling with things. Do I think they are from Jupiter and Mars and Venus? No, no, I do not. Do I think they're probably just older versions of us? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, the most famous, uh, the most famous alien encounter was not Roswell. It was not 1899 Aurora, Texas. Look it up. It's it's not even secret. It's 1561 Nuremberg, Germany. There's a there's a wiki entry on it. It's fascinating. You know, where two huge fleets of ships just went over the city and just beat the hell out of each other. And then a third, then the cops showed up. Apparently, I call them the cops. And then everyone left. And they were there for a full hour. A beautiful spring day. Not a cloud in the sky. And so, Mark, I know, I know, you know, even just with the title Flat Earth Recruiter, you don't mind a healthy dose of skepticism. No, because no, I mean no. If you don't look, if you don't make fun of Flat Earth in the first 10 minutes you look at, it, there's probably something wrong with you. Because I did. I, I hammered on this thing for nine months. So what do you I think was... a black hole is? <laughs> um, for me, everything that's in space. And, and again, I'm not... I, I don't want to come down on the astrophysicists and the astronomers too hard, but they're trying to describe things in the sky which they don't know. So, it, it, hell, I'll, I'll I'll see your black hole and raise it dark matter. There are. Do you I remember back guys. when the the neutron star exploded? Uh, one of the neutron stars exploded that was kind of far away and it affected a lot of electromagnetic stuff here back in like 2006. Sure, sure. Look, I mean, you're looking though, uh, don't forget that what you're looking at uh, is basically just a, a large projection screen. And it was, whoever built it, built it with the entire, with the intents or like the Truman Show to make us believe we're in a solar system. That was the ultimate goal because you have to get rid of the fence. Human beings hate confinement. Hate it, hate it, hate it. So to create a universe where you seems like it's unlimited, that's what you'd want to do. So everything, everything you see in the sky, again, black holes, neutron stars, quasars, whatever galaxy, whatever nebula, just goes on and on and on. Those space stories are there for one reason and one reason only. In fact, even the conspiracy stories, the, you know, the spot on Jupiter changed, there's a face on Mars, some weird thing on the top of Saturn, oh, we're reclassifying Pluto, and on and on. They're there for one reason and one reason only, that is, to reinforce that you are on a globe saturn globe everything globe because as long as you know think you're on a globe you're never going to look for the edge so mark i i know that um nasa has been an organization that flat earthers believe is sort of at the center of the the idea of like that we've all been fed fault a false story a false narrative right sure yeah. um what about companies like tesla like as and i'm sure it's, i know it's not tesla but um Oh, SpaceX. SpaceX. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so what about like SpaceX and private, you know, organizations that are going up? And then also what about other countries? You know, and, and one thing I'll say that just sort of reminds me of this is that for for decades, everyone was like, aliens aren't real, right? Like right. that they're fake. And and it's because in the U.S., at least at least here in the U.S., like it was just it was always just a fantastic tale. Now we have like not only folks saying you know from the military and our u.s government like semi sort of admitting that there's stuff out there but we have other countries that are sort of like yes you know sure. there's definitely aliens out there right sure. um so and and again for a lot of us like we haven't necessarily seen the proof and it's it's almost like what you're saying like we see an air force jet you know monitor that showings a weird light that seems to be acting strange and none of us actually understand the context around that and somebody right. could be somebody could be like you're, you know yes you're watching a screen with an alien ship on it and we kind of have to either believe them or not believe okay it. 
let me let me get the the first one out of the way. Uh, the the private space programs uh, that would be SpaceX, uh, Blue Horizon by um, I think it was Google or Amazon, and I think it's Google, and uh, Virgin Galactic. Um, we'll, we'll go do the high profile one first. For the longest time, by the way, we had no private space programs. Eventually, that was going to happen as billionaires became created, as our technology and our population, we were going to get more billionaires. But SpaceX is probably the most blatant because he gets away, I don't know how he does it, and I wrote about it in, in the book. I, I actually spent, I think, like three pages against Elon Musk because the man never delivers on anything he ever, ever promises, ever. In fact, uh, the New York Post, I was so happy when they ran their headline that said Elon Musk is a total fraud because he's never, he's, he's just, I mean, yes, fine. He made, in fact, he didn't even, let, if you ask the average person on the street, for example, who created Tesla, Tesla Motors, they say, oh, Elon Musk, like, no, 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 he bought him. He bought it like, you know, like Ray Kroc bought McDonald's and Mark Cuban bought the Dallas Mavericks. He bought Tesla Motors. Uh, uh, Elon Musk was a software engineer. That's all he did. He helped build PayPal. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then he got in on the IPO and was a billionaire overnight. But so when somebody sent, I'll give you a quick one. When somebody sent me that um, the link to the Tesla in space. I initially thought I was one of our guys that had photoshopped the image. And I go, I go, oh, who made that? Was that Jaron? Was that who, who, Bob? Who, who, who made that? And he goes, no, man, that's a live link. I'm going, live link? What are, you, what are you talking about, live link? I click on this thing, and it was the impossible car, basically. The car, if you took the average car and you put it into space, you know, some sort of horrible high temperature, low temperature vacuum, that car would have self-destructed. Everything would have melted. The, the tires would have detonated. Every pressurized system would have detonated. The windshields would have spider webbed. But the, the part that got me more than anything, and again, it was perfectly high-res image until they turned it off, even though it was supposedly going to Mars. And it's like, oh no, the battery's going out. It's like, what? What are you talking about? You don't, I'm not even seeing distortion. It was, it was a perfect image. No, what got me was there were no logos anywhere. You're talking about a private company and a public company right? Very high profile companies, by the way. And there isn't a single logo anywhere to be found. That thing should have looked like NASCAR. It should have been wall to wall stickers. And not, not only that, why did you use the Roadster? Why didn't you use your flagship, the Model S, a four door? You could have sold seats and that thing would have paid for itself. Instead of that generic dummy, that mannequin that was sitting there in the driver's seat, you could have sold all four to Disney. You could have had um, Iron Man, a Stormtrooper, Groot, and Boba Fett. The thing would have paid for itself. And none of you didn't see any of that. I'm sorry, uh, well, well, Tesla Motors. Now, is he in on it? Yeah, probably, but not at the highest level. I mean, what? For example, by the way, why does Tesla get to? I'm sorry, oh, Tesla, SpaceX. You got me going now. Space. Why did SpaceX get to launch from from uh, Florida? Why Why did it get to launch from Cape Canaveral? It's like they are literally direct competition to NASA. Why would NASA be helping them in any way, shape, or form? No, private private space. Or and by the way, even if they're not in on it like let's say you were doing uh you were part of blue horizon let's say you you founded blue horizon where are you going to get your engineers from so you're drafting that pool straight out of nasa <clears throat> you know the ex nasa engineers that's where you're getting people is uh, so you could infiltrate any one of those groups can, if can, you wanted to. can can you explain the time zones and sunsets and how like if i facetime somebody and if i'm in new york and i face time somebody in cali yes it's still a spot. Well, okay, outside. no, that's that's a, that's a wonderful question, and we get that. I've gotten that forever. Uh, which is okay. Why? Are, in fact, why are there time zones at all? That's the big question. It's like, well, if the sun, if it's flat, then wherever the sun is should be lighting up everything constantly. So it should never be nighttime. It should always be just daytime at, at, at all points. And it's like, well, yeah, and that's part of it's our fault because it's the way we draw the the way we draw it. When when you look at any diagram of the flat Earth, you see the sun and the moon. But the sun and the moon in our models are actually really, 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 really small, less than 50 miles wide. But we can't draw them 50 miles wide on the map because you wouldn't be able to see them. They'd be smaller in a pixel. So we have to draw them like a thousand miles wide. And that screws up the whole thing. And so to your point, if it is 50 miles wide and we've got physical and computer models to show you, it's, it's beautiful. Um, the, it, it's basically just a directional light source. And so 50, when, if the sun is really, really small and really, really close, like less than 3,000 miles up, just goes off into the distance that's all it is combine that with the thickness of the atmosphere it works really really well so the sun so the sun short version sun is really small and if you have an object that's really small it can only light up a very very small area and then you just have it going overhead like a like a mobile above a child's crib going around so in a is the earth 
is the earth is the is the earth affected by the sun's gravity? No, no, nothing's affected. Gravi- the so gravitation. So we don't go into a, so we don't go into rotation around the sun three hundred and sixty five days. No, 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 no. I mean, we're we we're talking about a literal building. So our whole world, our whole universe is basically a building, which is again walls, floor, ceiling, and in the middle of that building is a saltwater lake which is our oceans in the middle of that are some continents, which might as well be islands. And then above us, tiny little sun and the moon just going around the, the top of us. The moon doesn't affect anything. The sun does. I mean, yeah, the sun generates some heat, but we actually can create more energy with the underwater conveyor system or the jet stream. So you say we get most of our heat from underwater? We, a lot of the heat energy does get transferred through underwater. Look up the underwater conveyor system. Huge amounts of energy gets transferred. Remember, most of the world is water. Yeah. But the sun does help. The sun does help, but it's not all of it. Not even close. Um, Mark, we've had, uh, and we can sort of see the chat going on across all the different places this goes out, and we've been um, watching the the chat with some great interest um, out there. You, def- you have... Uh, some supporters out there. You have people, a lot of people asking interesting questions, um, and for the, I think for the most part, it, most people are 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 being respectful. But it's you know it's, it's okay. Yeah. It, you you I you gotta understand. I'm I'm pretty thick skinned when it comes to this. I've been doing this for five years now, and people I've gotten hit with just about everything you can think of. Look, and and when people just so you know, I can't really get mad. I mean, if you want to turn it personal, that's one thing, but I can't get mad because I was on the other side of the fence. You know, I, people say, well, why don't you yell at, at certain at p- certain people? It's like, I can't. I used to be them. I was there. I literally was banging my head on the keyboard five years ago going, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. Which is why, you know, it's, it's, I'm not here to convince or persuade. So anybody. what is gravity to you then? What is gravity? Dun, dun, dun. Ah, that's love. Love that question. Okay. <laughs> what is gravity? And Neil deGrasse Tyson will back me up on this. Even mainstream science can't tell you what gravity is. They'll, Neil Tyson, many interviews, and every physicist will say this. He's like, we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. We can only tell you the symptoms of it. You drop something, it falls, right? It's a magical molecular force that pulls things to the center of the Earth, if you're mainstream science. For us, it's a magical molecular force that just pulls things straight down. The only difference is that we also key in something like density, which is if you are living in a building, then it's a pressurized system, kind of like water. Uh, when you take a, a, a volleyball or a beach ball, you put it under water. Why does it pop back up? Because of density. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's less dense and it pops back up. Or when you take a helium balloon and you let go, what happens? It goes up, it goes up as far as it can. Why? Because the helium is less dense and so on and so on. So, no, gravity, I believe in gravity. I have no problem with gravity. Gravity is, for me, is almost identical to what gravity is in mainstream science. Um, you have another question? Oh, I thought you. Uh... <laughs> uh, are you re- where are you getting these questions from? Are you getting them from chat? No, no, I'm just thinking about them. Yeah, some oh, of the, good. earlier some good. of them were from chat, but Eric, a lot of Eric's are. J- it's just him sort of thinking right now as we're going through, and he's no, it's good. Everybody said does the same thing that when you get hit with flat Earth, you know, when when somebody hits you with this. It's like, even if you start thinking about it for a minute, it's like, okay, what about this and how does this work? I mean, that's literally what I do every day. Like, so and, how, and, how do we prove that the earth is flat? Okay. How would you prove it? I can give you five, five ways, five things to think about. That, uh, the first one would be long distance photography. Far and away, the most common one used. I didn't even come up with it. I did not use it in Flat Earth Clues. It wasn't even used in the documentary. I wish it was, but that's fine. The producers hated us, and I, I get it. They, they still won't talk to us at, anymore afterwards. Uh, long distance photography. So if you look off into the distance, forget about side to side. Forget about that. If you look off into the distance, how do you know, without using the space program, how do you know the world is a globe? Well, because ships go off into the horizon. And they go off and off, and finally they're disappeared. And you say, well, they've obviously gone over the horizon. They've gone behind the curve. And the curve is measurable, you, you know, for less than 500 miles, um, mainstream says it's eight inches per mile squared or eight, eight inches per mile per mile. It's an easy way to figure it out would be uh, 10 miles is 10 times 10, which is 100 times eight inches is 800 inches. And it goes steeper and steeper as you go along. So 50 miles is almost 1700 feet. 
give or give or take. Well, there's a problem there, and that is, ten years ago, if a bolt went over the horizon, went off in the distance, it was gone forever because your cameras weren't good enough. Now, however, with H HD, really changed everything. Now you can take a, a P1000 or a P900 and uh, just crank up the zoom. That boat's back. And then you can let it go off again, crank up the zoom even further. Well, that's a problem because eventually that boat's got to be on the other side of the hill to where the only limit we have now, we can see objects and, and landscapes up over 100 miles. Find me an object, a lighthouse, a boat, or whatever, an oil rig. Oil rigs are my favorite right now um, that we can't see. In fact, the only reason why we can't see, people say, well, why can't you see Japan from California? Why can't you see Europe from, or why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? That's a, that I, get, I get that at least one out of every 10 questions. Why can't you see this from this? And that's because you got to remember what we're breathing in, what you guys are talking through and all this is only mostly transparent. You're not breathing in nothing. It looks transparent, but it's mostly nitrogen, a little bit of oxygen and some trace gases. And that gets thicker over time. You're basically breathing in a thin version of water. Uh, that's the first one. Long distance photography, far and away. Second one would be um, gravity versus the vacuum of space, which I love so much. Gravity, um, so gravity, right? Who wins, gravity or vacuum? Vacuum will always win. If you suck a soda out of the uh, out of a, a glass, you're using vacuum force. Why doesn't gravity keep that soda in the glass? Well, because the vacuum you created beat it all day long. If you if there's a second floor in your building and you turn the second floor into a vacuum chamber and you had a valve up above and you popped it, what would happen? You know full well what would happen. The air would rush up instantly, violently. It would equalize. You probably black out, maybe even die. So the question is, why didn't gravity keep the air in your room instead of going upstairs because vacuum always wins well that's an issue because if you go outside why is our atmosphere still here your initial response your knee-jerk response is to say well gravity gravity is really the same gravity that couldn't even keep the air in your room from going upstairs that gravity i actually had a guy come back and say well there's so much more gravity outside it's like no it's the exact same gravity so, and I asked science, science will not be able to tell you where does our atmosphere end and space begin? Because space supposedly is this pure vacuum with this massive negative Tor reading. It's a pure vacuum. What Can happens you explain orbit? Orbit? Yeah, like a satellite orbiting. What is it? It orbits oh, yeah, around yeah. the Earth. Okay, Let me, I'll, get, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Hang on. So, th three more quick things. Uh, I'll rattle them off real fast so I can get to a satellite question. Uh, third one would be the eclipse shadow is too small. So if the moon is 2000 miles wide, why is the eclipse shadow only 70 miles wide? Shadows can't get smaller ever, ever. We can't do it here. Why, how are we going to make shadows smaller? In fact, it doesn't make more sense because our model, the moon is only 50 miles wide. So the blackout zone fits 2000 miles wide doesn't fit. And you say, well, that's because it's condensing. It's a lens effect. It's like, really? So the same thing should happen. If the earth is in front of the sun, we should see this 250 mile wide blackout zone on the moon. We never, ever see it. We always see a blood move. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, fourth one is the moon temperature, which I, again, was, I didn't even believe in this for a year, which was uh, the moon is generating a cold light. Not only is it self-illuminated, but it's generating a cold light. So um, if it's 90 degrees in the sun, it's 80 degrees in the shade. We all know that. But if it's at 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's warmer in the moon shade, up to 13 degrees warmer, as a matter of fact. And that doesn't make any damn sense because, remember, if the moon is reflecting the sun's radiation, it should never go negative. The moon is generating a cold laser light. We can do this in universities. Doesn't make any sense. You can check this with a point and click twenty dollar thermometer from a um, from a hardware store. In fact, I was the first one to suggest like, what happens if you take a magnifying glass to moonlight? It even gets colder. Now, does that prove a flat Earth? No, it does not. But it absolutely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon. Last one, and I swear I'll get you a satellite one, which is um, uh, the last one was the Van Allen radiation belt trap question which is Van Allen radiation belts announced by NASA in 1958, right? Super deadly bands of radiation. You can't get through them. That's what he said anyway, back in 58. So are they deadly? Yes or no? If you say yes, then how the Americans do round trips through them for the entire space program? Round trips with no shielding. Remember, the only things that stop radiation are lead, gold, and a whole bunch of water. Nobody, everyone went through with plastic and aluminum and nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody died. Nobody even got cancer. There's still five of these guys walking around today. And if you say, oh, well, it's not deadly, then you can go to NASA.gov, and there's a wonderful video there called Orion Trial by Fire, which says we can't test capsules because we haven't solved the radiation problem. You, you solved it perfectly. What are you talking about?
It's it's complete contradiction. So your satellites, do I think, no, the, the better question for you is, um, do I think satellites exist? Yes, I do. Do I think they were put they were put up by up there by rockets? No, no, not at all. Because uh, in fact, again, this is not classified material. You can look up the high altitude balloon programs from NASA. NASA launches hundreds of balloons every day. They are the world's leading consumer of helium, and probably hydrogen, for that matter. They launch up. They can do payloads now with weather balloons. They I've seen them launch satellites. In fact, not a secret. Payloads up of upwards of four tons. That's eight thousand pounds. If you can launch an eight thousand pound balloon satellite via balloon, why the hell would you launch anything by, by a rocket? I mean, that's pennies on the dollar. So, do I think there's rockets made? Yes. Do I think that most people know anything about it? No. I think the rockets just go off into the distance and splash down somewhere in the ocean. Wait, wait, wait hold on. <laughs> Are there satellites? Sure, but God, the God rocket remember. system. The the they they put them in rockets so they can give them the speed to go around in orbit. They travel at like or you could use. Remember, if it's a if it's a flat model, you can just use the jet stream. If you uh, if you take the um if you take the weather balloons the flat don't model, orbit. They just they what? go up there. Weather balloons go up there to check the weather. It's not a rocket. Yeah. A rocket goes up there to a, a satellite is in orbit to give yeah. to give us signals from space in, to in Earth, some right? cases yes but even your best telecommunications guy will admit that's like yeah 95 percent of our bandwidth is still underwater fiber optics we have a massive massive underwater fiber optic network out there that handles most of the load sure we have weather balloons i'm sorry we have satellites tethered to balloons that get to do a few things sure but as far as putting up in rockets nah nah don't have to. Why would so you? So how do we get GPS then? Like, I don't understand. If we had GPS, <laughs> no, how do we love it? No, no. These are good. These are fantastic questions, and and these questions make sense because you're connecting the dots. GPS system is not what you think it is, uh, and I did a clue on this, which was the GPS system is just remember GPS stands for Global Positioning System. Supposedly, 32 blanket coverage overlapping satellites that that surround the entire world. No, it's not that at all. In fact, every pilot I've talked to, everybody that deals with the GPS system says there's huge gaps, massive gaps. In fact, it appears to be just the old Loran system, which is ground-based radar. That's it. When you go, in fact, if you, the, the easy way to test this, Google which is Earth? why I did a clue. What about what? Google Earth then? Like, how can you, like, Google, travel Google around? Earth Google? Is, Google Earth is just a wonderful software program that's overlaying a, the, the maps onto, and it bends them around the sphere. It's all it does. Interesting. Google Earth is nothing. It, by the way, it's not a photograph. Google Earth is literally just a composite of a whole bunch of image. Yeah. Sorry, images that are stitched around a sphere. So, so, seriously, look up. If you get a chance, it's not. Again, I'm not. This is not classified information. The first picture that was ever taken of the Earth from space, supposedly. First one was um, Apollo 17, otherwise known as the Blue Marble which was done in 1972. Do you know how many years it was before they took another full disc shot of the Earth from space? 2015, 43 years. 43 years, no one took a photo of the Earth. In fact, and this is not this is not speculation. Obama even went on television and talked about it. It's like, oh, second blue marble from space. Really wonderful. It's like, really? 43 years, no one questioned it? It's all composites. And when Photoshop came out, oh, then, then all bets were off because now you can Photoshop pretty much anything. Um, what what didn't I answer? You had an alien. What you had a, a second part to your um to your to your question. I can't remember what it was. Oh my! Oh, no, I think he was. I think he yours. Was, yeah. So well, you know, it's to me, it's an interesting thing because the idea of um to me, and you know, hopefully, I don't get anyone angry with this, but uh, to me, adopting belief around flat earth to me is as as easy as somebody who adopts belief around religion even because, sure. because really and and that's why i was and by the way i'm not trying to um i i hope that's not being too disrespectful but oh no no it's, you're it's, fine it's, it's you're more fine. it's more that like when people are explaining stuff to us that we can't believe and and by the way i know what your point will be but when people are explaining stuff to that to us that we can't believe we have to suspend that disbelief so that we can, we we can like grab onto that concept and start to believe that it's true, right? Right. And so there's, but the the thing is that there's most of the world around us, 
we have to sort of suspend some level of disbelief because even right. traditional what we you know traditional science you know the fact that somebody's telling me that water is made up of you know um hydrogen, hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen right like yeah. i i have to believe that because i may not be able to prove that myself and so for, i think the one thing for a lot of folks out there is that um the it's the whole correlation and causation thing right and so right. we can we can come up with things that make a lot of sense but that doesn't always necessarily mean that it's true and so right. by the way i i don't necessarily i personally you know i i find this intently interesting i don't mm. necessarily subscribe to it but i enjoy talking about it i think it's it's i think it's fun to talk about sure. um i will tell you that there's definitely people out there who you've you know you've you've definitely enticed and i mean it makes a lot of sense that's what that's that's <coughs> that's what you do um and i'm sure you'll have some folks following up with you um yeah. But, you know, it's, I guess my thing is that it strikes me that it would be easier or it would be easier to prove that the earth is. And I understand you gave your five points, but it would be easier right. to kind of to me to come up with like concrete, hard proof to folks that the world is flat. It might right. actually be easier to prove that than it would be to prove that it's a globe. All right. I'll use the court case real, real fast, which is can I prove to you right now? that the earth is flat no could, couldn't prove it because if i could i'd be on the cover of every magazine right. out there you wouldn't be but talking with us you'd be I would, talking with uh, no i'd be talking with everybody i i talked i heck I, I do junior high schools now. what's what so what is a volcano to you then where does the where does a volcano lead to where does it come from is it just volcano and yeah this part usually ticks people off because yeah. from an engineering standpoint it's very very big which is volcanoes remember everything about this is artificial including volcanoes so if there is a magma system you wouldn't leave and leave that chance people say well we don't have the you know no so you don't believe there's a super volcano under oh yeah yeah region? yeah yeah no i do i do think there's a super volcano yeah i absolutely no i think there's a complete magma system underneath us but i think it's absolutely controlled i i think it's monitored by us i think if you were going to build a little terrarium for your tarantula right and you put a light and a little thing of water and some rocks and stuff. Would you leave anything to the natural processes of that? No, you're going to make sure everything is monitored. Now, a magma system is very intriguing and having a super volcano in, in Yosemite is, is a scary threat. And you can also put evidence of other volcanoes that have done horrible things. But it would still be artificial. Sorry, so the, that, that, the the meteor that hit and knocked the dinosaurs out, that's artificial? Oh, oh dinosaurs are artificial. Now, now you're getting into some fun stuff. Because for me, uh, you got to remember, our, our unbroken civilization only goes back, our history only goes back 5,000 years, give or take, before all of a sudden then there's these big gaps. Do I think we're the first people to rent this apartment? No, not a chance. I mean, look at the sunken cities off of Japan, sunken cities off of India, Puma Punku, the real pyramids, the Bosnian pyramids, Vimini Road, goes on and on. So between civilizations, I think there is terraforming. Now, do I think that some of the early parts of this world, you know, back when the continents were all one big Pangea, do I think there were giant dinosaurs, well, you know, giant to us, but little lizards to whoever built this place? Uh, do I think they were running around? Sure. Yeah I, yeah, I do. Do I think they were wiped out by something catastrophic? Sure. I think every civilization has their time here. And after that time is up, we have to leave. We graduate. We go. You, you don't have to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here type of thing like the senior class senior class can't stick around forever and so yeah do i do i think there's evidence of that sure craters here that wonderful crater in arizona or the gulf of mexico uh or any of the other so, you do, so do you believe in global warming that's so interesting that people can i've gotten so many of those questions over the last year yeah i do i do believe in global warming so you believe um, that the earth so you believe that the globe is but well, I don't call is, it global. Yeah, I, call, this is I, remember, I remember, we, even media doesn't call it global warming anymore. They call it climate change. But I'll go with the global warming thing. Doesn't it make more sense that if you have greenhouse gases, if it's an actual greenhouse? Remember, global, the actual, the, the old global warming climate change thing didn't make much sense to me if it was a globe because those hot, hot gases have to get up to a certain point and then they just stay there. They yeah, and that's, don't go. So, so that's that's what you're saying. Like the water heats up, that the water is creating heat. That's because the ocean uh, 
sucks in all the carbon dioxide. But he's also saying that because the because it's like a snow globe, there's the covering. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. It. The, the it's the think of it this way: if you bring um a propane, remember if it's a if it's a pressurized system, if it's an enclosed system, you bring a propane lantern into a car that that's got its air conditioning running. That air conditioning is going to have co have to compensate for that propane lantern. It's going to create some hot and cold spots where they shouldn't be. Some weird weather. You put another lantern in, another lantern in. It's going to get weird and weirder until it's just chaos in there. Um, human beings, do I think human beings have an effect on this world? Yes, even though it's an automated system and I think there's automated ways of controlling stuff through the jet stream or the underwater conveyor. Do I think that humans have an effect? Yeah, I do. I mean, come on. The, the cars you run, unless you're running a battery powered car, is just a furnace. That's all it is. I mean, you're burning, you know, it's, it's a little furnace that could easily heat your house. And we have billions of these things running at all times. In different parts of the world so yeah do i think that climate change is real yeah do i think the ice caps will necessarily melt and will drown no nah, we haven't really seen we've seen a few islands here and there but i think the system is trying to compensate i think something else is coming down the pipe i think eventually the system will have to compensate for us but i don't think it's going to do it with um with water so for mark you know i gotta tell i gotta say you know having come from the media you know and, and fake news is like a big thing these days everyone sort of loves to use that term i right. i personally find it um, as an, people don't realize they're using it as an excuse to, to not be media literate, right? It's their excuse right. to sort of say, like, I don't have time to fact check or I don't have time to figure out if this makes sense. Um, I, I just have an emotional feeling about it. And so I'm going to, I'm going to run with it. And then yeah. when they find out that it's not real, then they call it fake news because they believe that media has the responsibility to like tell the truth, but it's called the free press because they're supposed to be able to do what they want and we're supposed to be smart enough to know the difference between truth and lies and opinion yep. and fact and fiction, right? And it, the yeah, fact and fiction how, part is tough because we rely on other people to teach us about and, science, right? And stuff like that. And you also rely on corporations or re rely on parent corporations. Anyone that brings up fake news, I, I kind of tongue in cheek throw this at them. I say, fine, nobody, nobody should believe in fake news and fake news is an offensive term. To journalism fine everything on cnn is absolutely true and everything on fox news is absolutely true find me one person that will agree with both those statements find me one person you can't because you because the, it goes down partisan lines well and, and you and know that full yeah no so no it, it, there's almost nobody out there that reports just straight up fact like here like we're no. we are here and you are seeing you know, a man walking down the street. No, it's usually there's usually context around it, and depending yes. on the news outlet, depending on the person, and and I guess what. So my point is, it, just having been in media for so long, when I hear people refer to the media as a monolithic entity that is conspiring against everyone, right. what, the the reason why I have trouble with that with media is because there's too many like poor reporters there's too many like reporters getting f hired and fired and all that. and so i get it like it it maybe you would say like oh well if a media conspiracy would only happen maybe at the upper levels of everything going on and that's how come you don't have a photographer that gets fired and is now angry and is going to spill the beans about like right. a right, secret right, right. that he knows about so here's right. here's what i would I, so one thing that you've mentioned um, and by the way, I'm a big science fiction fan. So like, you, you know, oh, even, me too. even a lot of like the photos we show, like it reminds me of like ring world, the book, the, the ring world series that I watch. And so, the, you mm. know, like just the idea that there could be like non-traditional shapes out in space that can support life. And it was always right. a fun thing for me as a, and because it piqued my curiosity and my sense of science, even because it, it was always brushing up against science. Right. Right. Um, so one thing that you mentioned that fine because i like to keep an open mind i also have a lot of fun i think this is a lot of fun talking mm. about right for yeah. me personally um and so uh it doesn't mean that i subscribe to it but i enjoy these kinds of conversations and so yeah. the the thing that i would say is one thing that you mentioned when he when eric mentioned the the lava or the magma underneath and you were saying and i understand from a flat earth perspective i under, i right. understand how that would work but you had mentioned that we are controlling that and so what what I sort of goes from is the idea that this could be, you know, aliens that set this up a long time ago or or right. God, depending on who you want to like, you know, from just yeah. from a flat earth perspective, no matter how you want to say it, it sort of came to be. And maybe we don't know that. Right. That's part of the mystery. 
Right. But once we're starting to actually control elements as like the human populace and even from down to NASA and everything else, like it just strikes me that like, you know, it's one of those things. It's like if you as soon as two people know, it's not a secret anymore. Right. Like one person is a secret. Yeah. The, the Ben Ben Franklin thing. How do you keep a secret between three people? You kill two of them. Yeah. Right. And, and so yeah. how do you keep a secret with like pro- like hundreds and thou- probably hundreds and thousands of people over the over the long run? It's that that actually is not as hard as you might think, because, again, that's that's a good question, because people say it's too big. There's too many people that would have to know uh, scientists and pilots and, and all everybody at NASA and everybody, every every space organization. It's like, no, you treat it kind of, kind of like Capricorn one, the, the movie from the late 70s, which is the only guys that need to know are the telemetry guys. You can I mean, seriously, everybody at NASA doing their job. You know, they, they make fuel systems, they polish capsules, they sew this, they do HR, they mop the, the halls. I don't know. But the only guys, the, they can do whatever they want. And you can launch rockets and those rockets can go up. And But once they get out of visual range, that's the important stuff. That's the telemetry. Once you, those are the only guys that really have to know anything. Um, the rest of it is just size. I mean, every pilot I've talked to, none of them ever, ever thought about it because it's too big. It's too physically big. Um, so 99% of the people that work in a space organization, they don't know anything. Um, most astronomers and astrophysicists don't know anything. I mean, I've heard stories about radio telescope operators that have met untimely demises over the last 20 years. Of course, you'd have to keep them you know, somewhat secret. I treat it kind of like um, uh, the movie 2012 where you know they you know you can keep a secret if you want if the secret is big enough and the reason why you'd want to keep the secret is because again potential shockwaves not just um educationally which would be nightmarish but economically and uh, the, the the big one of course is the spiritual side of things you know you're talking about most of the people in this world are tied to one of the five major religions you know um, hinduism buddhism um, judaism islam and christianity and you're asking them to show restraint against science that's beating them over the head with textbooks for the last five centuries. It's tough. It's tall order. You don't necessarily want to do that. So, yeah, you can. Yes, you can keep a secret. I mean, this is different from the Manhattan Project, where you had hundreds of thousands of people building the atom bomb and you compartmentalized it to where actually people were surprised. It's like, wow, we have an atom bomb. Right. Because they didn't know exactly what they were doing. In this case. All you had to do was seal off the outer edge and the upper edge. And the rest of it kind of works out for itself. You know, civilians can only go 10 miles high in a, in a civilian airplane. And Antarctica is locked down because of the Antarctic Treaty. And space is more or less military. I mean, out of the 500 people that even claimed to have been to space, I think three of them were actually civilians. The rest were military. I mean, I like somebody asked me recently. I know there's only so much time we have, but I'll keep going if you want to keep going. Which is, um, um, somebody asked me, because I, I was interviewing Terry Verts, you know, one of our astronauts. And the host was saying, are you calling Terry a liar? I said, look, I'm not saying that Terry, being an astronaut, is a bad guy. I'm saying that he's a, a soldier. He works for the United States military. In fact, he's a colonel. You don't make full bird colonel unless you know how to keep a secret. I'm not saying he's a terrible person. I'm saying he has to follow orders. Even if he wanted to say something, he couldn't. Because treason is completely different than being sued. Treason is something you don't walk walk away from. Hmm. There you go. Sorry, my little rant. Um, Mark, I th- I know that we've gone a little bit over an hour, and we do try to, you know, to. Storm. We can do whatever I'm you want. Trying to think of some more questions. No, well, so, <laughs> so Mark, I I gotta, you know, it's it's been really interesting seeing the comments that have been coming through as the show goes on because there's folks that find it interesting. There's there's some folks that are like, huh, sure not necessarily all. interested, although we're still hearing them say that in the comments. And there's been a few little mini fights in the comments oh, yeah. between folks that feel very strongly one way or another about this. And so for 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 me, I think that this is uh, I can't even think of nothing. Well, you, you <laughs> thought of way more than I thought that you would. You actually, you know, once we got going, I could, you know, Eric, I, I thought he was getting some of his questions out of the comments and he wasn't a lot of these were just things that he was you did good you did good eric i i honestly i i thought you were reading them through the comments because you had some good stuff and and again this is a really polarizing topic I, i as producers i learned quickly as producers told me it doesn't matter whether you love or hate a topic as long as you're engaged in it and i have never seen a topic so what about albert einstein how do you feel about him I don't hate him. Uh, it, no, it's a good he said question. a lot of stuff about like, 
you know, space and he, gravity he and all that good stuff. He, he so did, like, but his tool, but his tools were limited. I am not saying that. But uh, they, but they come out to be true though. Like, his I mean, his theories on light may be true, but it doesn't mean that space is true. And by the way, I'm not saying that I'm smarter than Einstein or Stephen. Well, Hawking he just or... did this. So, did you hear about the two uh, black holes? When two black holes collide, they create the gravitational waves. They create, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard about that. I also know that that particular study, their grant was just about up. They were just about, what about to have the their space planning. Voyager. What about the so, what about Voyage One so, and Voyage Two that's traveling through space? No, no, it's right okay. Now? It's okay. Every probe that we send out, whether it's Gemini, Mercury, Apollo, Voyager. Oh, what were some of the others? Pioneer, some of the other ones that were sent out there, especially but the early Voyager, you know, used in Star Trek movies. Uh, did we send rockets up? Yes. Did those probes go anywhere? No. You got to remember that NASA was created for one reason and one reason only. And same thing with the Apollo program. So they sent was... those up there and what? they just stopped. He, they, he's saying they didn't even really send them up. There. They didn't go anywhere. And 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 I and We're I don't still getting wanna, updates I, from them. So you saying that's BS? Yeah, he's saying this is BS. BS. It's just well, come on. Did the Mars rover? Okay, I'll give you. I'll give you a quick one, real real fast. We'll forget about the Mars rover with all their HD footage, or anything else is being shot and sent back from Pluto. Uh, I'll give you some quick tech stuff, um, which is the Apollo. You can take any Apollo photograph and you'll see that wonderful little satellite dish, you know, that's pointing back towards the Earth. Th this is not secret classified technology. This was 1969 technology. The VHF transmitter that was being used had maybe a rain. Remember, it was battery powered. Radio stations can't broadcast very far. And this thing was battery powered, had maybe a range of 50 miles, maybe. And even then, you'd be lucky if you get Morse code. And this thing was sending 10 frames of color video a second and two-way communications, and it was pinpoint perfect. No, no, we don't have, we didn't have the tech back then. Now, do we have what the tech about now? Meteors? Sure. What, what about meteors hitting the earth? How, how? It's, it's in your head, isn't it? It's never going away. Is it? How, how can <laughs> um, meteors yeah, No, 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 no. meteors are good. No, as a matter of fact, I, uh, meteors was one of the first questions that was ever brought up to me, and it wasn't even one that I included in the clues. Um, meteors are artificial. Do you know? Do they have something to do with the the structure and the builders? Yeah, sure. Uh, my friend said it's like throwing rocks into an aquarium. That's all you need: high speed rail gun, some metallic ore. Make sure you don't aim at any cities, which is why that one in Russia a few years ago got a little close. Uh, but I always th I always think it's interesting that no one can capture any footage of a meteor landing, ever. You think that you know, especially like right now with but six billion craters. smartphones. The what? But there's no, no, not, there. not, not after the, the fact, not after the fact now happening. Why don't there's we, people, you know, there's meteors... people that find meteors all the time. Nah, yeah, no, and they sell them. Not, not finding the meteors actually find, show me in a, one that actually lands, like show me the impact, show me a video of a meteor actually hitting something. Well, I mean, you can never, well, explain can't, the shooting why? star then. What Shoot, shooting stars, same sort of thing. Eventually, remember, projection. meteors do hit. It's just, and we have six billion smartphones. And and remember, it's also got if you believe in the the mass thing, which I do, it's got three quarters of a chance of hitting water. Nobody on a boat ever has seen a meteor. You know, follow this track, this sucker down. You didn't have to watch it through a tree line and hit some water. I believe in meteors. I do. I think it's also fascinating though that we can't find any meteor strikes in real time. Fascinating. I think it's kind of hard to catch a meteor when it's random. I mean, it's coming from space. Well, again, again, back in the day, yeah, when no, barely anyone had movie cameras. But now, heck, we photograph everything. There's <laughs> meteors that orbit the 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 our our solar system. What do you? How do you? Uh, know? He's saying that uh, don't, he's, don't he's, get too locked into that solar system thing, man. He's saying that the people that are seeing those and reporting on them here, are here, part of give, the conspiracy. Let me let me give you a quick quote. You're gonna like you're gonna like this. Ready? Okay. So there's a there was a quote from George Orwell back in 1946. And admit he was not a flat earther, but his quote was perfect, in my opinion, which was, he goes, he was talking about the responsibility of science, why people believe what science tells them. And, and he said, if you ask anybody on the street, you say, why do you think, why, how do you know the world's a globe? Their first instinct, their first immediate knee-jerk response is, what are you talking about? We know it's a globe. It's been proven. It's a given. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. And you say, and then you go, really? How do you know that? How do you know it's a globe? Remember, this was 1946. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. How did everybody in 1946 know it was a globe? They didn't know. You were told. That's well, the big I difference. I could be like the square is flat. I could be like the world is square now. 
You well, you, you could, could if you wanted to. And say, I mean, and say you, you each side up, is a season. You have to come up with something for the, the square switches. You go from one square to the next. That's one season to well, the next. Well, but then when you start talking it out, there'd be logic. No, no, I know. It's, again, coming see, up with it. It, it's all right. It, but that's the it's a line from the Truman Show. In fact, I'll, I'll give you two quick examples. Line from the Truman Show was was was, it, was easy, which was we believe the world that is presented to us. When we're children, we do not believe in in lies. Nobody is nobody ever lies to us ever. I mean, hell, we believe in Santa Claus. The, there was a wonderful movie which I talked about in the clues called Forget about the Truman Show called The Village, which was an M Night Shyamalan movie, which was basically some very rich people that wanted to keep their kids away from crime bought a wildlife preserve. They built a town circa 1800s. They put their kids in it and they're saying, "Hey, we're living in the 1800s." Were they lying? Yes, they were. But here's the interesting part. If those, when those parents finally got old and passed away, no one would be lying at that point. Those kids would have kids. And because all they'd said, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's monsters in the forest. So you have to stay in the town. Yeah, so you're saying but, like everything is an opinion. Man. There's nothing. No, is, no, no, nothing no. It's, not, it's not an opinion. But we believe what we're told by people that we immediately think are more intelligent than ourselves. If you wear a lab coat, you are immediately more credible. Yeah, so then who? So then who? So then who's? Then who's true? Then what's what's true? Dun dun dun! There you go. That's, that's, yeah, you're absolutely you're right. Saying, why? If why you say, if you say if you saying if you saying that people only trust the people that they heard from, well then that's everybody because which is why no you're absolutely people. right. Which is why I always say like, look, do your own. Don't take whatever anyone says at absolute face value. So is that why you're Hero a flat earther research. because you just want to you want to be the black sheep? No, 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 not at actually... all. Not at all. No, I stumbled upon that upon this. Yeah. I really loved the globe. Heck, I used to collect antique globes and cover my wall with maps. I loved the globe. I think the globe was a really cool icon. And so I was very, very disappointed when I when I was kept looking at this and again, which the reason why the, the flat earth spread, two reasons why the, the flat earth has been spreading the way it has. One is because we can now explain a world model that is easier than the solar system, way easier. And people love easy, believe it or not. And the other one is something I absolutely just forgot because I was thinking in like five different directions. Just, just now. Um, go ahead. Oh, no. Well, th that's okay. You know, I think uh, we really enjoyed talking with you. I know, actually, I think if we had the energy, we could probably do this for quite a few hours. I got some more questions. And I think it's interesting <laughs> because there's folks out there who are, who are, well, I, you know, I think what would. I'd, I think what would make sense is to have you back on at some point and we can, sure. because, you know, I, what I see with Eric is that you really have his wheels spinning, right? Well, and I'm just trying to figure out what it is you actually, what you believe that made you believe Flat Earth. That's why I asked you about, I, like, I, aliens and stuff, because I'm like, if you believe that the Earth is flat, then you have to believe aliens. No, no, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how I got there. I'll tell you how I got there. I got there because I tried everyone, the T-shirt the literally reads, it's not my T-shirt, which is I became a flat earther because I tried to disprove it. I went in trying to prove the globe. And that's, again, what everyone, what you and everyone, anyone listening will try to do. It's like, okay, how can you prove the, the globe in a court of law? And you'll try it and you'll try it and you'll try it, which I, loops me all the way back around to, can I prove a flat earth? No, but I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe, create so much reasonable doubt. The only where, place you have left to turn is some other model that leans towards flat. And if you say, well, reasonable doubt isn't enough. It's like, no, no, you know full well, reasonable doubt gets people off every single day, <laughs> all the time. And that's, it works. And that's how I got there. I, I got one question. Do, my own do you go to like, bars and bet people beer or shots or shots of alcohol <laughs> that they can't prove you wrong? No, well, no, no, that's not me. So there's, there's other people in our community, a lot of people that do street activism. And I, I took my, my turns at a, at a few of those. It's not, that's not my role. There's other people that absolutely will do that though. They'll go, in fact, they won't go to bars. They'll just stand on street corners with sandwich boards and, and seriously just sit there. It's like, you know, prove it's a globe, prove it's a globe. And uh, you do that enough. Again, the enthusiasm of our, of our, of our particular community is really infectious. We have a 99% retention rate, believe it or not. Meaning once you get in, if you're in, you never ever leave. And the reason is because we didn't tear down the globe for you. You tore it down yourself. That's the, so that's the big part. We say, that's we, what I was trying to do to you today. And I can't find nothing. 
<laughs> well, so 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 Mark, you know, the, uh, yeah. we were having a contest today. We do giveaways every day on the show, and, and usually the giveaways are just sort of socially driven. You know, like or share the show, or tag a friend to come in, kind of yeah. thing. But today we thought it would be fun because we wanted to encourage folks to ask questions, and we were passing some a lot some through. I know Eric asked a lot of his own questions. Yeah. Um, but maybe there's because we we thought it would be great. We wanted people to try to stump you. So I, first of all, I don't know. Did you feel like there was a tough question? And, and really, I guess that's a good. Maybe that's a good question. Is from I'll a, put y'all questions earth, in a from comment a, now. From a from a flat Earth perspective, is there a, oh. a challenging question sometimes where all of a sudden put your questions in? Uh, now. you 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 know, is there is there a more difficult question? that you get sometimes like oh yeah 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 the well that's a good the the question that they'll say okay what's the easiest proof that you have or what's the hardest what's the thing you have that's the most difficult that flat earthers have to deal with um yeah i'm i'm not shy about saying it's the antarctic sun that is the by far the the most difficult question because the antarctic sun can't work with just one traditional light source it can't uh, because the, if, if the light is moving around over us like a mobile above a child's crib, then having 24 hours of sunlight in the North Pole, that's easy. You know, all you have to do is get it closer, like a needle on a record player. But if it's on the outer edge, you can't do 24 hours of Antarctic sun. So you're either in one of two schools of thought. You either say, well, there is no 24 hours of Antarctic sun. Uh, I, I don't know if I believe that. I think it's actually real. But if it is, then it's because there's a secondary light source. There's something else. There's a lot of stuff going on in the sky that we still don't know. But that's probably by far the uh, the most difficult question that I that I get, which it isn't very often. Uh, do you want me? Do you want me to pick a question for a winner? Yeah, no, that that would be great. And hopefully, it's not Eric. Although Eric likes to joke with everyone that you know when they win a prize, he taxes them half of the prize. So, Oops. nothing's ever free, Mark. I think we might have just lost. Uh -oh. oh, we're back. We got you back. Sorry, but uh, ask your questions now, y'all. We, we got will, you back. Will I Mark. be able to? Well, will I be able to see any of these questions? Um. No. We, no, you know, I was you, just you, looking. You probably have to paste them into a Zoom group chat. Hang on one second. Somebody said, "Who hires the guy that flips the switches for the moon and the stars, and where's the switch kept?" <laughs> Sorry, who? Wait, what? What was that question? It said who? It said who hires a guy? Who hires a guy that flipped the switches for the moon and the stars? And where's the switch kept? There you go. That's the best question, right there. I can already tell you that's the best question. I have never, I have never gotten that question before ever in five years. He says you keep saying they, they built it, they, this. Or they keep this secret. Who is? Yeah, the... yeah, yeah. Uh, again, so who who built it? I that's that's not as good as the, the whoever. Again, whoever did the switches question. That that's definitely the winner because I've well, I've just know you guys won. She's, she's celebrating Heather the Brown comments. Won. She's celebrating that, the that's comments. That's by far the best. Who hired the guy? All right. Again, who who, who sorry, built the place? Sorry. Who, who built the place? When I talk about they, when I talk about the builders, there's only one of two roads you can go down. You're either talking an ancient civilization that's much older and much more powerful than ourselves. Who knows? Maybe it's a previous version of us uh, or it's the divine. Either way, they're one step closer. But if it's an ancient civilization, they're one step closer to God's phone number than, than we are. Um, the line I like to use is straight out of the movie Contact with Jodie Foster, which I think is so humbling where, you know, she goes through this huge journey to get there. And then she asks, she's like, did you build all this? He goes, we didn't build it. We have no, we, we don't know who did. And it was just as simple as that. Meaning whoever built this place, they may not even know more secrets of the universe than we do. Uh, we are, we're all part of a process. Um, and the, the, the follow-up question to that would be, what do I think is outside of this place? Do I think it's space? No, no, not at all. You don't need space. Even Carl Sagan said that the, that the universe doesn't make sense because it's just so empty. There's 99.999% 99 nothingness. Um, I think that whatever's outside of this is the opposite of what is inside of it, which is if we if this world is 99% con conflict, meaning um, it doesn't matter how beautiful, how powerful, how talented, uh, how rich you are, uh, you always find problems. You know, everybody's got problems and no matter what. Uh, it, it's almost inescapable. It, 
you know, think of somebody that has no problems. It's, it's impossible. Even mortality catches up with everybody. I think if this world is 99% conflict, I think whatever's outside of here, if you want to call it Nirvana, Shambhala, heaven, so on and so on, I think it's 99% unlimited. So. What, what level of education do you have there, actually? You're, 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 very, well you're very well spoken. I, so was, that... I, I, I was thrown out of college um, my senior year for manufacturing explosives on campus. What? How's that? <laughs> was that the anarchist cookbook? Did you have the anarchist cookbook? Uh, no, I was just a big fireworks guy. Uh, I live up in Seattle, Washington, and so there's a lot of Native American reservations up here. And they, they have different laws when it comes to fireworks. And so someone has to make stuff for them. And so I was young and stupid and uh, made a lot of uh, heavy, heavy stuff for them. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Well, I do. By the way, when you, if you can open your mind up to flat earth, there's nothing you'll shoot down, really. Um, now, do it, there's a lot of conspiracies I like more than others. Do I think that Bigfoot had Elvis's baby? No, probably not. <laughs> But but do I think that Bigfoot maybe exists? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I mean, I'm up in the Northwest. There's a lot of, and, and the reason I say that, I'll give you a quick example. Would be the the Billy Ape, which is uh, look it up. It was only discovered like five years ago. Six foot tall chimpanzee down in South America that um, was very good at hiding from people, very skittish around people, and then they no one believed it, and then fine. And by the way, the the Bigfoot thing that goes into the whole cryptozoology thing. Don't forget that just about every weird species we had, we thought was a myth. So the, the giant panda was a myth. The giant anaconda was a myth. Um, the giant squid, which we still have never caught one of the big ones because they swim way too deep. Our best subs can't catch them. You know, we, we can't get to these things and they're freaking huge. And we, the only reason we even know they exist would be the, um, uh, the, the giant sucker marks on the side of sperm whales, the side of the size of garbage cans. Hmm. Or my favorite, look it up, uh, the coelacanth fish. People, when anyone says, oh, science is absolutely right, look up the coelacanth fish. C-O-E-L-A-N-C-A-N-T-H. It's a very unattractive fish with a bunch of extra fins. Thing was been dead for 70 million years, right? Extinct for 70 million years. Except that they caught one off the coast of South Africa in 1940, and then Mozambique, and then Madagascar. And finally, National Geographic has you swimming around with them. Well, how did science get it absolutely wrong in that case? Science, every scientist in the world would have been absolutely dead wrong. How'd they get it wrong? Because they saw the fossil records and they stopped looking. They stopped doing their own research. It's like, well, there's the fossil record. The fish must be extinct. No, it's not. Hmm. So there you go. Do, go oh, somebody asked if you own a telescope. <laughs> and that, by the way, is a little dig when somebody says, "Do you?" If you're, he might as well have said, "Have hey, you flown in an airplane?" Well, no, no. Well, I think I think it's interesting though because I would think that flat earthers would like would actually be try to prove in themselves wrong. Because... Oh, we don't. We, you don't need telescopes anymore. All you have to use is use a um a digital camera with a with a high end zoom. Got so it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all you have to do, telescopes are just, they're just old school now. I mean, seriously, just get a, like a, a Nikon P1000 with like 125 power zoom. Zoom into the stars. The stars look like they're underwater, which is a whole nother thing. Uh, but <laughs> you know, I, I, I know what you mean. Look, I've, I've argued with astronomers and said, look, I've seen the moons of Jupiter. So, I well, go, and speaking, of, Mark, speaking of partying, so we, yeah. a lot of our audience is from the cannabis industry. And so oh. we've had folks... And they're not asking this as a, in a backhanded way. They're actually there's a lot of folks out there that I think would love to hang out with you, but they're asking if you consume cannabis. I have. Um, I had a girlfriend up in um, uh, British Columbia who was a, a big cannabis user. She used it in just about every form you could think of, and she kind of introduced me to the whole the whole thing. But it just doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. What, yeah I've, I've what done, about psychedelics? Uh, I know you do that. You have to. There's no way you don't. No, I people. It's really strange you would say that. That 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 would be one of the winning questions right there. Uh, which is, um, people wouldn't give me drugs when I was growing up. I was always pretty eccentric, and they refused to give me drugs. They're like, "Yeah, you don't get drugs." I go, "Why not?" And and seriously, I was really disappointed because I always wanted to do shrooms. I have done all very very few drugs. Well, you should definitely come take a trip down here. <laughs> Hang out with us. We love to kick it with you sometimes. I know I would. Yeah, actually, and, and I, I, 
I've I've drank I've drank my share of things, but very few drugs have ever been offered by way. I would I would love to get you on a psychedelic trip. I know it'd probably be really really freaky. Hell yeah, you'd be fun as hell to kick it with. Mark, it was such a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for spending so much time with us today. I know our audience really loved it. Even the folks that were, you know, that you didn't convince in the comments, we had folks that were saying to thank you um, for, and and that there's a lot of folks that, like, appreciate the fact that. You changed some people's minds. Well, and and (laughs) just, you know, it's, it's, you've got conviction in your beliefs, and it comes through, and people love your energy, and we really appreciate you spending so much time with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And Excellent. thanks to all, all the audience people for listening. Yeah, and, and and Mark, thank you. And for folks that want to um, get a hold of Mark, I think the best place is YouTube, right? Is Yeah, yeah. Just type in, um, uh, easiest way would be just type in Flat Earth Mark. Great. Mar- Mark it. Sargent, thank you so much for jo- joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Have a good one, man. Take care. Yeah. Bye, guys. Um. Wow. Well, how many people believe in flat earth? Do you? Do you actually believe it now? No, I don't believe it. I do got some questions, though, about the round earthers out there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So it's it's really interesting. My man's had an argument for everything. It didn't matter what it was. So that's the interesting thing, though. and You You couldn't tell him shit. When when people are with the idea of believing something that doesn't really have any proof, it's you know it's. No, it's I just, got I got some I, I got some questions for some NASA people and some astronomers and stuff, but I I hear him that like it's tough for people to prove that it's a globe, but it's also clearly difficult to prove that it's flat. And I would think that it's way easier to prove that it's flat. He needs to he needs to go on a trip. Globe.